Hi, my name is Ann Wolf. I'm a pediatric physical therapist at Emerge Pediatric Therapy. Um, and today we're gonna to be talking about intentional play versus exploratory play. Um, I am part of our infant development team and some of my examples will pertain to infant clients, but really most of this um, information can be generalized to all children that receive therapy services, whether it's PT, OT, or speech therapy. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the difference between intentional and exploratory play and why they both really should be part of kind of your day-to-day -day routine. So here at Emerge, we work with children of all ages with lots of different diagnoses. Um, and one of the things that we talk about with all of our families is home programming. And that looks like intentional activities that you can take home and do with your child in between therapy services. We know that home programming maximizes kids' ability to meet their goals here, and it really is what pushes them forward in terms of functional development of skills. Um, we know that once a week, sometimes kids are seen twice a week, that even if you're seen twice a week, that is still a small amount of time given all of the hours that our kids are awake and kind of playing and doing things and engaging with their environment outside of therapy. So we do wanna set you up with a really robust home program and things that you can fit into your daily life. However, even with that, there is always room for what we call exploratory play, and that is free play. That is letting your child be a kid and do the things that they gravitate towards and doing it in a way that is not always directed. Um, so let's talk more about both of those pieces. Particularly with my infant clients, we talk a lot about intentional versus exploratory play. Intentional play would be things like, if we're working on sitting, then you would have intentional play time to work on skills in sitting. And that would include a couple different exercises done in a very specific way to improve a child's skills in sitting. However, even if that's what we're working on, the other developmental skills are still important. So it's still important for infant clients to have time to just be on the floor, to be exploring, to be rolling, to be spending time on their bellies, to be able to kind of start army crawling or crawling skills. Those are all still so important and they all still have a place. So even if your therapist is giving you intentional activities to do, that intentional play time that they want you to incorporate, please always know that there will be space and that we want you to have the space for exploratory play as well. The benefits of intentional play are that you're spending time working on skills that might be more challenging for your child. So regardless of what those skills are, you probably need to set aside that kind of one-on-one -on -one time to really work on those pieces, knowing that your child might need modifications in some things, that they might need extra motivation, that they might need a cheerleader, um, because those skills are really hard for them to do. And having someone there with them and working through that hard piece is really, really beneficial in getting them to want to participate and complete that activity. Um, even better if you can pull in interests that they have to help make that feel a little bit better. So. An example of intentional play from a PT scope might be that, you know, your child needs to work on balance and maybe your PT has given you um, some ideas of how to set up a balance focused obstacle course. Great, but maybe your kid doesn't love balance because it's hard, but maybe you can pull in something that they do love. Maybe they love transformers and you can kind of give it a transformer theme and maybe pull in some transformer action figures and they're gonna maybe move the transformer action figures through their obstacle course as they do the obstacle course. And at the end of the obstacle course, they're gonna collect all those transformers and then they're just gonna have like a transformer battle at the end. And maybe that would make them motivated to participate in that. And maybe if you do it with them, then they'd be even more willing to participate in that. That would be intentional play. You are pulling in activities given to you by your therapist to work towards goals that are challenging for your child in a way to help develop and grow their skill set. That's your intentional play. Exploratory play would be giving them the space to just play with their transformers however they want. It is does not have to be directed. It is however they choose to play with them. And that is a different way to play than it would be if it was directed and intentional. Both of them are still good. They both have their place. They both still need to happen. Sometimes the timing of them can feel hard to do as you know when you have a busy schedule, especially if your child is in school, but there are benefits to both. Our goal as therapists is never to push out all of the exploratory play time and turn it all into intentional-based play. That is not helpful for kids. That is not helpful 
for kind of the mindset of a parent feeling like you never have enough time to get enough intentional play in. So by no means do we want to push out all of your exploratory playtime. As a therapist, one thing that is really, really cool to see is when kids' exploratory play starts to pull in elements of the intentional play. So maybe you didn't ask your kid to build an obstacle course, but maybe they still pulled some pillows down onto the floor and started building you know, lily pads or things to jump from or navigate over all on their own. And that is one reason that an exploratory play can be so beneficial is it just gives your kid a chance to use some of the skills that you're working on intentionally, but on their own, not directed. No one is asking them to do it that way, but them pulling those skills into their exploratory play tells us that their skills are growing, that they're learning, that they're kind of utilizing these movement patterns that we've been working on all on their own. And that is wonderful to see. That tells us so much about how much they're growing and changing and learning and how much their bodies are kind of changing and developing new motor plans. So it's wonderful. If we take away all that exploratory time, then we would never get to see that. So we want to have that balance of intentional time for play and exploratory time for play. If you're still unsure how to kind of, how much intentional time you should spend or how to break up those pieces, please talk to your therapist about that. Any of us would love to kind of talk through the pieces of intentional versus exploratory play and help families better break down the time that they spend with their child, knowing that all time you spend with your child is important. And how do we help pull in some of the pieces for home programming and intentional play, but in a way that doesn't overtake all of the exploratory play. So if you have questions about that, please talk to your therapist. Um, we would love to talk more about it. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.